control there. Okay. Now we just first thing we do, we're just focusing on our breath and we're just breathing in through our nose and then out through our mouth. And we're just shifting ourselves from this social discussion that we've had into a more centered space. Uh, if we're breathing in, we imagine that you're breathing in spiritual light, spiritual substance, spiritual connection, and draw that breath into the middle of your head symbolically. Just imagine you're drawing that breath into the middle of your head. And as on the out breath, just releasing any tension in your body. We're breathing in the substance and essence of light and spirit. And on the out breath, we're just letting go any tension that's in our physical body. Breathing in spiritual light and connection. And on the out breath, releasing also any pent up emotions which no longer serve us and only will weigh us down in this session. Now, because I work directly with my spiritual guardians and some of your spirit guides as well, I like to open up the group accordingly. The so great divine spirit, we ask that you shine your light, your love, your protection upon our group at this time. And we ask that whatever is brought to us is brought from wisdom, uh, brought to us in wisdom and love from a divine source that serves only our highest good. We give acknowledgement to the presence of our angels and archangels, other spiritual guides and guardians who will serve with us during this session. We each come here for a different reason and you can uh, set your own intention for this session at this time and I will set it generally for the group. Great Divine Spirit, we come here for our soul and spiritual development, that we may glean the wisdom from all the difficulties and all the experiences, good and otherwise, in our daily lives. That we may lead more purposeful and useful lives. That we may have more understanding and wisdom in all that we do in the workings of the world and in being human within the cosmos that we may learn our life lessons more readily and that we may share goodness, love, light and compassion and empathy to all of creation. Some of us come here for healing, some for knowledge, some for inner development, some for social connection, whatever it is, may each of us receive something that will help us on our pathway at this time. Now around you, uh, in the periphery around you, a couple of metres before you, beside you, above you, behind you, imagine a sphere of beautiful shimmering light. And within this space of light, this sphere of light, is our sacred space. And we appeal to our personal gatekeepers to protect our sacred space and ask that any impulses that come into our space come only from the divine source that serve our highest good. We welcome in our guides and angels. We also welcome in any loved ones in the spirit who would like to abide with us, but we ask that whoever comes, comes with our highest good in mind. Now we'll go through um, what's referred to as a chakra opening exercise, which is the main energy fields in our body and the main portals to higher consciousness. So above your head is your crown chakra. And we can imagine, or you, some of you will sense, a gentle stream coming down through the top of your head, a stream of spiritual wisdom, insights. It could be dreams, feelings, visions, ideas, or just a frequency of awakening you can imagine this coming down through your head from high spiritual dimensions. 
and some of it you may feel some tingling down through all the pores and molecules in your body now imagine it streaming right down through your limbs out through the arches of your feet and deep down into mother earth and from deep in mother earth her own beautiful frequencies her organic energies and consciousness streaming back up through our feet so we are here a bridge between the heaven and the earth with the physical children of earth and the spiritual children of above now before your forehead is your third eye imagine we're taking a symbolic breath in through our third eye draw, drawing in psychic impressions from the environment around us and may we be able to see things in truthfulness in clarity and glean knowledge and wisdom from what we perceive move down to our heart chakra and now drawing in the frequencies of love from the spiritual world around us we can imagine our angels and archangels our guides our loved ones in the spiritual world realizing that a door has been opened that their love may stream as a frequency they're coming in through our heart chakra and enveloping us like a beautiful warm embracing blanket and we can absorb this warmth this love deep into our own the center of our own heart our heart center now from your own physical heart the center of your own heart a glimmer of your own love your own empathy and kindness for all living beings beginning to shine more brightly like a light to others and imagine your own light now shining back out emanating through your auric field to all living beings and we'll move down now to our solar plexus and just take your symbolic breath in through our solar plexus and we can imagine that we are very present that our higher self is very present where we are and in whatever we do we can stand in our own light in our own integrity and speak our truth We move down now to our sacral chakra. We're just doing a chakra opening exercise for um, people who've just joined us. So we just got our eyes closed. We're breathing gently and rhythmically and symbolically taking a breath in through our sacral chakra. And here we're connecting with each other, consciously conscious of each other's emotions, each other's biography, you know, feeling in the feeling realm and developing, strengthening our powers of empathy and compassion. And now moving down to our base chakra and symbolically drawing in on our breath, the life force itself, the chi energy of the universe. And imagine this flowing up through our spinal column and bringing vitality of life itself to our physical body. And on the out breath, just allow that to subside. Now I've been asked for us to focus on the theme today of breathing throughout the day. Now, when they say breathing, it's not just the physical breath that's being referred to here, but it is the soul breath and the breath of your emotions, allowing your soul to breathe as well as the air that you breathe. I want you to contemplate this theme for five to 10 minutes in any 
way that you can. The main point here is to focus your mind on a, on a con concept without your mind wandering. And if you can, the more you can do this, the more that you are then prepared for inspiration from above as we move into other parts of this meditation. So just concentrating on the theme or the concept of breathing throughout the day. your mind focused, bring it back to the theme all the time. And in a few minutes, I'm sure one of our guides will be speaking on this theme. So just concentrating on breathing throughout the day, the soul breath of life throughout the day. A couple of minutes to go on this focus on this theme of breathing throughout the day, the soul breath throughout the day. And as I close my eyes, I'm just going to be inviting in my spiritual guides. Now I have someone who's drawing close to me who's identified themselves as being actually from another star system. And they've got a very electric blue kind of vibration coming through to me. And I've also got the first words that they wish to share with you. And I'm just giving them a moment just to assimilate a little more closely. Um, so I'm feeling a lot of this, particularly around my third eye, area. My friends of Earth, I speak to you as a kind of ambassador from faraway places, and you can consider us far away, yet through the powers of thought and the powers of spiritual vibration, we can be very present within an instant such is the power that each of you, each of you and each of us possess on the mental plane as such. And I would like to invite you on this theme of breathing throughout the day to consider or picture yourselves as being living in a garden and you are traveling, walking, experiencing the veritable garden of life and everything that comes your way during the day are like the different flowers or the different plants within this garden of goodness. And part of your task is to recognize the scent or the vibration of each of the flowers, become very conscious and very aware of them. But it does not mean 
that you consume them or become them. But as you travel through this garden, there will be flowers that give you certain life experiences, perhaps of joy, and there'll be other flowers or plants within this garden of life which give you experiences of sadness. But these are food and richness for your soul aspect. And what is important for you as you walk through this garden is that you learn to breathe in it. And if you come across a flower as such and breathe it in, and it is something that brings you much sadness in your life, you must remember to breathe it back out and not to become it. Experience it and then let it go. And as you let it go, because you are not overwhelmed by it, your soul is thereby free to offer compassion, to offer, offer empathy, to offer service and for you to be free to go about your earthly tasks, your earthly service in this garden of life. And really, there is nothing in this garden that is harmful for your soul if only you learn to breathe correctly with your earthly soul just as you learn to breathe the air in your world. And you can choose where and how to breathe physically. And if you're in a forest or by the ocean, naturally you would breathe far more deeply compared to, say, crossing a busy, dusty street. And so you moderate your physical breath accordingly, and you moderate your soul breath accordingly. And there is a connection between the two. For when you have absorbed too much through the in-breath of the soul, you can use your physical out-breath to symbolically release and expel the emotional component of your soul that is wearing you down. And through a regular practice of breath, you can learn to develop the expulsion of the soul as such. And this practice can become quite powerful that within your meditations, when you learn to use it, become more familiar with it, you can use it to project your soul as if you astral travel with it and then bring your soul back at the completion of your meditation. And part of the practice of meditation is particularly for people who forget or overlook the soul breath during the day. And in meditation, first of all, through exercises to relax or still the mind as you have just completed, you are then more prepared to then use your breath to expel the soul, to travel to a far higher and lighter place. And as you use your breath to do so, you can release yourself of its earthly tethers of deeper, lower emotions and once more sojourn to the higher, lighter regions of the spiritual world. And as you do so, you may then re-infuse your soul with aspects of your own higher self, your own divinity, and indeed your own life plan and life purpose. And then using your breath, we draw our soul back into our body from its spiritual journey in your meditations. And through careful assimilation back into your body, you may then be rejuvenated on a soul level. Your spirit will be renewed with new vigor and new determination 
and clarity to work with your sole purpose on earth. So as you come in to your periods of meditation, we encourage you to come with a vigor, a vigor to practice this breath of the soul and to be able to release yourself from your earthly cares for a short period at least. Allow yourself to release from them and then travel into the spiritual realm in which case many of your problems will actually dissolve or you will be able to bring the light on to the darkness that is in your life and illuminate the way forward. And this illumination, it can open doors for you simply via the rewiring of your own perspective your own self-belief and renewed clarity within the way that you think and the way that you feel and vice versa as you manage the way and modulate the way that you feel you then have the capacity to think more clearly and more directly to achieve what you need to achieve in your day. And with this correct use of soul breath, you can rise above many of the difficulties that are in your life. Some of them will still persist, but there is an aspect of your supreme spirituality as such that will allow you to be elevated above them and to live on a higher dimensional thought plane that will then manifest more change in your life. It will be a steady progressive change for most of you, but change nevertheless. So for some of you, this is the embarkation of a new phase in your life's journey, your soul journey. And we encourage you to take the journey and to enjoy all that it has to offer. For such journeys are the food and the nurture, the nourishment that your soul and spirit require. And generally speaking, for people on earth, they are famished with their spirit and soul. So share this light, share this soul breath, this new way of being with others and be a light for others to learn to assimilate their soul and spirit in a powerful way within the rigors and the challenges of your earth lives. Many blessings to you all, my friends. And these people, there were several people who spoke then and they are uh, identifying themselves as being from Andromeda, from that sphere of space. But they travel space and they travel the spiritual and mental spheres that have been brought to us. And just my gratitude for the thoughts that they have shared with us. Let's make everyone aware of their breath. If anyone has a connection with spirit, you're more than welcome to, to switch on your microphone and share. But I'll invite people to share very shortly. So just become aware of your breath once more. Have a sip of water if you've got some nearby.
Um, I'll give you a little tap on the shoulder first. Conrad, did you did you get a stream through? You often do. How did you go tonight? Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I jotted down a couple of things. Uh, so, yeah, let me read through it. Uh, each day is a breath of the soul. And intermingling with the energies of the day, a receiving and giving of vitality, an exchanging of life force with the physical, sensory, and environmental surroundings. To be centered as one breathes is one of the most powerful tools in the advancement of one's soul. For any impediment to the breath will affect the entire being, from physical to emotional to mental, etheric, and beyond. Each breath of the body and the soul is a doorway to union. To experience self as a matrix of energies flowing through your foci of consciousness. Imagine the breath as its own entity, moving through you as you move through it, an interweaving of life energies, harmonizing with each other as you pass through each other. This is such a wonderful lesson in love. None takes from the other in this interaction. Both sides of the balance, both the breathed and the breather, are left fuller for this interaction. One plus one is not two, but four. The act of breathing is a perfect representation that the whole is, a great, is greater than the sum of its parts. In this way, each breath, each in-breath and out-breath is a step toward the great light within, a personal discovery of unity, vitality, release, and discovery. Consider this as more than metaphoric. All, including the body and its environment, is electric and magnetic a nexus of trans-physical fluids that emerges light. The breath is the thread of life that ties the tapestry of, li of, of life together. Enjoy the pulse of life that sits in your body. Allow each part of your body to join in with the process of breathing. Nurture this flame of life, this tether to all things, and it will give back a thousandfold. Thank you. Thank you, Conrad. And Conrad, how much... Um, would you say a lot of that was just given to you or a lot of it was in your mind and you just arranged it? How, how would you describe Gosh. that? Um, I'd say it's, it's a bit of both. Um, I mean, there are some phrases that just kind of pop in kind of fully formed and they're really quite nice. Mm -hmm. And some of it's more of like a feeling um, that kind of ties back to other things that I've been curious about, like, I mean, for example, the one plus one is two, not four. I'm, I used to be a math teacher, so I'm, I'm very much into that kind of like, that kind of structure of explaining things. Um, uh, and even with say like the, um, the fluid, fluidic nature of the, like, of the electromagnetics that's all around us, inside of us. Um, yeah, that's a thought that's kind of like floated around, um, in my head for a little while um but it's kind of i guess it's just found a different way to emerge or present itself so um how much is given um i don't know i, I, f I feel like i'm sort of climbing up a mountain and i'm sitting somewhere and i can see things slightly differently mm. um and i don't know what's at the top of the mountain um i guess i could call it it's a call it a different thing that gives information to me um i i yeah i don't know um mm. It's an interesting experience, though. This oh, it's the coolest thing because it's experiential rather than just verbal, you know. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Look, would anyone else like to just jump in on the conversation? Any any questions or any thoughts that anyone would like to share? Um, particularly if you're new and you don't know what we're talking about, to clarify some of the words that we may have used or what we actually did. Um, is interesting as well. Um, Jeff? Um, there was a lot of stuff going on in there that very hard to process within immediate scenarios. One thing I really got out of that, just a very small snippet in the whole process, was the mention of astro traveling, something that I've been interested in, have dabbled in, but never had any great confidence or success. But what I felt tonight was this uh, directional sort of spiritual feeling to just do it. And, and confidence was flowing like I'd never felt before. It was like, just go and do it. You can do this. 
be capable, mm. uh, don't hesitate, stop stop fighting the parameters that are, it was, it was great. That, that was just a very positive feeling. I've got the chills. I've got the chills now. And part of what's, what's happening here is this is a power of spirit and we are picking up or absorbing the belief of the, of the spiritual people who spoke and gave the transmission. So their, their power that they, they, like they actually do it, they live it. And we are now resonating with that belief rather than our own. So that may help carry us into the next part of the session as well. That's, I think, how it works. <laughs> Making it up, but I think that's how it works. Um, okay. Um, Pamela, are we going to be able to keep you quiet for much longer? <laughs> well, I couldn't come back to you in a sec, Jeff. Hopefully, I'm not notoriously <laughs> for always talking in the group. I'd like to give other people a chance. Um, no, that was really powerful. Um, Roger, because um, this week has been very intense in terms of planetary shifts. Um, you know, there was a full moon in Cancer, and I'm Cancerian. And Cancer is all about nurturing and how you are nurtured, and you know how other people nurture you and how you nurture other people. And um, for me um, personally, it's interesting because every time you sort of do meditation or come to the group, it always ties in what's been going on with me in the in the week. And this week I've had some intense shifts, um, clearing some stuff. And exactly as you said, um, the breath, how the breath connects with the soul is um, basically to be of this world, but not let the experiences of this world kind of bog you down. And we sort of get so fixed on, um, you know, everything that's going around in the 3d world that we forget the freedom that we have on a, on a 5d level and for me personally it's been like um i've been doing a lot of meditation this week and um, what's come up is i've let go of a lot of emotional stuff like um just things that have sort of plagued me uh, you know inner child stuff and um just things in the way i sort of operate and in letting go of that, as that actually come about is, um, is my soul, I did do an astral kind of journey and my soul has sort of went in and sort of brought back some gifts um, on a soul level for me and integrated. So it's interesting what you said, because um, that's exactly what um, the energy is for this point in time. We have Mercury retrograde and we have Venus retrograde and it's all about re-identifying ourselves and letting go of the heaviness and sort of remembering our soul's light um, and that's definitely what I've done and I've been also working with my guides and um, it's been really powerful in terms of you know the healing that has been coming through um, but yeah it's uh, you know so much there's so much going into my head and so much was coming through when you were sort of um, talking with those beings um, because it feels like I sort of went on lots of journeys this week. And I think the message is really strong because that's exactly what they want us to do, to let go of the heaviness. And um, when you talk about the breath, it's about bringing personal power to yourself. So uh, whenever you feel like overwhelmed, what do we do? We just take a breath and slow down. It's bringing that power. But also on the soul's breath level um, is basically remembering who you are when you breathe in with your soul you remember who you are and you bring in those gifts and those facets and just remember just to be there's nothing to prove there's nothing to um sort of uh you know justify or anything it's just remember who you are and bring that light and power back into you in the 3d world and also um it's you know january and january is uh, number one which is very big on manifestation so it ties in with letting go of the old within your 3d self and on a soul level and and creating what you want to on a 5d level and then bringing it back and sort of integrating it in this 3d level and creating for the rest of the year for yourself or for future times basically um, so that was very powerful in the way it all tied in. So thank you. Mm. And look, I'm I'm a little bit overwhelmed at the moment because I've got you know I've got people like 
yourself, Conrad, and, and Jeff has a lot to offer, and there's other people on here too. And you offer so much, each of you, but you bring it in humility, and there's no, no ego real, really connected with it. And I, I, I just really admire that, and I really appreciate um, what each of you bring on that level. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. You know, it just makes this a joy. Like you guys should have your own platform, <laughs> really. <laughs> For what but, you were sharing. Um, you're also a reflection of that, Roger. So thank you. You are also very humble. And that's why I really, last night I was in bed and I was meditating and I was thinking, oh, tomorrow it is, you know, your group. And I was really looking forward to it. And I was really excited to be here today. So thank you. Okay. Well, you're more than welcome. You bring it all together, Roger. You're like a living, breathing heart. Of it's, yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm. And, and hey, look, this is just, just personal level too. Like I have a lot that can go on in my day and I can sort of almost literally forget to breathe and, and you hold it in. And so, you know, it's, it's practicing this stuff in our day, particularly when the pressure's on to actually re remember to do it. You know, it's, it's, it's easier than it sounds when you're on, on, on in a group like this, when you're out there in the hustle and bustle, you've got to practice it. Um, as best as best you can, you know, which is not always ideal. Okay. Um, anyone else would like to jump in, even if you're brand new, but don't be shy. Any questions? A good question. Okay. Well, I tell you what we can do, and I'll help you out here. Um, now, Jeff, I just want you to cast your eye around the screen. Does anyone's name or face? Sort of just catch the corner of your eye. It's just a ring. I just click your mic back on too there, Jeff. Sorry, um, that was immediate. Um, Karen is staring at me. Okay. Let, let's um, let's give they pull out those cards, Jeff. We'll give give them a shuffle. <laughs> it's just new territory for me. All right. They're right yeah. away, so they're a standard deck, but they're a vintage deck, which um, I just visually like them. All right. Well, just just carry um, Karen in your mind and see if there's a card or two that just drop out of the deck or present themselves as you manipulate the cards there. I'll, I'll pin you too so we can hold the card up and see what it physically is. Pretty obvious. Um, two of cups. Okay. Actually, I'm just going to unpin um, Karen for a moment so I can get a clear look at this so I can. Um... Okay, so just hold that up again, Jeff. Oh, it's gone. Two of oh, cups. Okay. All right. Just let me. Um... There it is. So everyone, just have a look at that card. See if there's any symbology that st st um, stands out for you. Um, and Jeff, do you do you have any feelings with it yourself? Any a bit of intu intuition that might come into your mind? Just a suggestion of the initial stages of love. Well, that's not a bad offering. <laughs> Got a nod there. Um, now, I one thing that I saw on that card was the, the centerpiece that was elevated. And it was like there's two people like either side of you who sort of will look up to you and hold you in quite an elevated light. And it's like, you're like, how would you say, it's almost like a, protect, a protective gesture that you offer them, but also like you've got this elevated view of the world that you can sort of, how would you say, bestow upon others as well. So I would say that you, you do have some gifts that you have got to offer to others, and there's two people in particular who would benefit or who are benefiting from it and look forward to what you offer. Does that make sense 
at all, Karen? Yeah, on uh, so many levels. So thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Both aspects, just beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone like to add to that? Yes. Um, so Karen, immediately when I saw that card, um, it's um, what stood out for me was um, self-love. It's about you giving to yourself. Um, and the more you give to yourself, the more you, because you have so many gifts to share with the world and, but you have to give more to yourself because as soon as you release that in yourself and share with yourself or pour into yourself, because that cup is very much pouring into yourself. Mm -hmm. Once you pour into yourself is just going to open up like a plethora to be able to share with the world because you have a lot of light in you. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. There, there's a lot going on in that card as well, and you can quite lose sight of what's in the distance. But what in the what's in the distance there is like the pinnacle of your journey, and you it will pay you never to lose sight of that. In amongst everything else that's going on. Okay. okay. Mm. Thank, thanks, Jeff. I think we can relate to that one. Thank you. Okay. Are you feeling lucky to do another one? Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, now, just before you do, um, I'm just going to click on um, my room cam here. Just a sec. All right. Hang on. First of all, there you go. You're all on telly there. Um, but I've also got a couple of people in the room over here who might um, um, might be in the in the running here for a reading. So I'll just pop them on. So we've got Rika in white there, and Mamiko, who's just on the other side, giving you a wave. So they're regulars in the group who pop in from time to time. So just um, yeah. So we've got an extra couple of candidates here, Jeff. Hi Roger, my cards become pretty you get pretty accurate, so I can pull out one for someone as well. Okay. Just, uh... My choosing someone. I I just got Barty um, coming through. Okay. And that's so... what I found. What is it? Um, uh, five of Wands. Now, I just pin that again. Now, Barty, can you hear us okay? I think you can because you got your... Okay. Um, okay. Just, yeah, that's good. Just hold it as steady as you can for a moment. All right. Now, um, Jeff, do you get? Do you have any feelings with this yourself? Any intuition that comes to you for Barty? Um, this is tricky territory. I feel a little conflict, um, unresolved conflict. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not serious. It's just something to work through, perhaps. Yep, I, I could sort of, my impression was quite similar in that there's a, it's almost like there's a bit of jousting going on around you. There's, it's like you're caught in the centre of, it's more other people's dramas rather than your own, but it's sometimes it's a little bit hard to escape it or to keep it at a distance and it can come in and um, clutter you a little bit. And sometimes what I feel would be good here is for you to just literally drop down to your knees and crawl out underneath someone's legs there and go and have a bit of space from all this. Um, Barty, does this make any sense to you? It does make a lot of sense. Um, it, it, it's very accurate, actually. Okay. Um, I, don't, give, don't give us any more info just yet, okay? okay. Now, now, would someone else like to continue or add on to this? Um, okay, so Barty, um, it is very important for you to distance yourself from other people's 
stuff. Now, this doesn't this does not mean to um, dis uh, doesn't mean to distance yourself or to cut them out of your life or whatever. It just means you have to give yourself a bit of space for yourself. And as you remove yourself from a situation, that creates more space for the others in there to breathe and sort a few things out for themselves. Um, it's like it doesn't mean any doesn't mean anyone's right or wrong, but when there's too many ingredients mixed in the in the puzzle, it just gets yeah. too busy for anyone to make sense of it. So if everyone just stepped back a bit, the whole thing would be much easier. Does that make sense, Barty? That does make sense. Yeah. Okay. So you could also invite someone else in that group to go for a walk with you, but just to you know just to how would you say, just to break down the vibe a little bit and just allow things to breathe. There we go, back to the breath. Other people have got to learn this soul breath, you know, let go of a few things so they can put down these, these jousts for a little while. Okay. But unfortunately, not everyone is elevated enough to let go of their jousting. It's like they need it to prove themselves, unfortunately. Um, okay, but it's not your stuff. No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Anna, did you want to have a shuffle for someone? Um, yeah, these cards have been recently pretty good with me and my friends, but um, it may be hard. It may be dark here. I may need some more lights in this room. Uh, so who am I making shuffle for? Oh, you get to pick. Is it me pulling up the card? Oh, I just got one getting out, really. Or is it the person um, selecting the card? You, you hold someone in your mind from the screen. You just pick someone randomly. Can someone volunteer, maybe? Okay. Who would like it? Who would like a card? Otherwise, I'll do it for Chong. Just randomly pick the name. <laughs> okay. Well. We'll, we'll go to Chong first. Now, I won't leave you out here, Meredith. Um, but Chong, would you like a card? Are you there? Just click on if you are. I'll just help Chong out here. So, Chong, if you're there. Otherwise, um, we're going to go to Meredith. Okay. So, um, it might have to be Meredith, I think. Chong's not I can asking. pull up for you, Roger. Oh, no, I'm good. Sorry, who is that? No, give it to Meredith. We will share it around. To who? To Meredith. Mary, Mary, uh, I need to see this person. Uh, is it, sec. how do you spell your name? Your... There we oh, go. Oh, hello. Meredith. Oh, Mary, yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll just pull up. How many? Uh, whatever you like. One's good, but if you need to do a couple, whatever you're drawn to. Just do it the way so, you can okay. do it. Oh, this card, it comes to my friend as well. First one is dear. Can you see what you need more? It says... Right. Just a second, oh, I've got a spotlight you. Gentle mm -hmm. diplomacy. It's actually not a stack. No, it's not the same card. Can Do you need me to move to the light or... Um, I, I can read the description. Um, I need to look for... Sorry, description is not I, here. I can read it no, sometimes descriptions get in the way. So let's just look at the um, use your intuition and your sense of mood. Is it uh, light enough? <laughs> yeah, I think we can work it out. Can maybe move yeah. it closer to the light, yeah. Okay, so without reading a description, do you have any sense on what this card's about, Anna, just by looking at it? Uh, <laughs> sorry, but this card for the person that I don't know the situation, it just say it feels like you need to adapt to something. Yeah, because there is another card who is tag, which is like a big male. And that card actually means I once pull it for my friend. It means you need to take a control over your life. That's how it's like take a pride and leadership. And this one is a young kind of young deer who is not the big male who is in control. So this one is sort of learning and adapting. That's my perception. What I but got with, 
what I've got with you, Meredith, is um, first of all, it's a picture. It's a picture of of innocence, and though it's a a deer, it's it's almost a sacrificial lamb as well, and it's a little bit like through your goodness and your a degree of innocence, it's like you would take a bullet for someone else in, in like an emotional way. It's a little bit like you will cop it. Um, and and how would you say, just wear it when when sometimes you, you should you don't deserve that treatment. So you're on the receiving end of other people's stuff and you just you just take it. So it's a little bit like on one hand, um, it is very a very noble thing to be like the sacrificial lamb. And what you need to do is just exercise judgment when to just take it and absorb it. And when you have to sort of evade or defend yourself or assert yourself a little bit more. Um, and sometimes the assertiveness will serve you very well and serve as a message to the other people or person that there are barriers and boundaries that deserve to be um, respected. And sometimes you can absorb it just to show them that I'm a big person and I'm above your stuff and it doesn't hurt me. So you've got to find the modulate between what is the best way to deal with mm. each individual. Does that make sense, Meredith? Okay, big nod there. And is this a, another card, Anna? Yeah, I just pulled three cards as I've been asked. One is perception and one is a spider. Perception. Uh, yeah. It's like a forest, um, whatever you see. Mm -hmm. So it's like. Yeah, no, I've got what, it. I'll get other people interpret it. <laughs> yeah. And the if other someone, one is spider. Creative does project. anyone want to jump in? I'm willing to carry it, but if anyone wants to jump in, Pamela. Yeah. Um, so Mary, the, the message I got for you is um, <clears throat> for self-belief and self-trust. Um, you know, it's something that we really need to, I mean, consider working on. Don't really need to, but you know what I mean? Like it's something that you should consider working on. Uh, self-belief and self-trust. Once you work on that, then the fear will dissipate. Know if you can take that. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Now, with the perception card, Meredith, I've got that you can tell and you'll be able to discern as to when to assert yourself and when not to. So you can tell when someone has overstepped. Um, Jeff, did you want to jump in? I just see your mic on there. That's a complicated one. I'm, I'm, I, I agree with what, what's been said already, but that spider is sitting in the background. It's almost like it's, it's probably not a warning, but it's sort of suggesting that you need to just be careful or watch out or look for devious behaviour or um, just just um, don't just accept everything that's been coming your way as as as, as that's positive. Yeah, I concur with that, Jeff. That was going to be my last little bit, but you've, you've picked it as well. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, some, some of what's been directed at you isn't just, it is it is a little bit on the dark side of, of humanity or people's emotions. It's just not nice. So that's when you have to assert... Okay, don't fall into their web of deceit. <laughs> okay, we'll take a, um, oh, Karen, have you got, um, did you want to jump in? Yeah, I was just uh, shuffling some cards whilst uh, we were in the process of that and one jumped out, which was um, trapped in fear. A bit hard to get the lighting right, trapped in fear. So, but that fell completely out of the deck. And I was like, oh, I'm not so sure if I really want to put this one forward. So I asked again, if there is any fear there, what is it that Meredith needs to focus on? And what came out instead was the hope card. 
-hmm. And basically by staying um, true to the light and by focusing on what your desires are, and as Pamela's already said, you know, January is the month for manifestation. So by focusing on what you really want to achieve, you're in the right energy right now to be able to make that start to happen. So whatever's going on around you, um, just know, watch for the light, watch for that, you know, northern star. Keep your eyes on that. Keep your eye on the goal and you will achieve what you need to achieve. Mm. Okay. Now I'm, going to, well, now I'm going to do something that will actually help you, Meredith, and, and, and anyone else on here for that matter who wants it. And this, the card that you drew, is you, you'll be able to, we'll have a look at the card once I've done this, okay, Karen, once I've finished. So I want everyone to close their eyes. We actually partially did this at the start, but we're going to do it a little bit more now. Um, so I, I want just wait for everyone to get comfy there. Um, now, this might lead into something else as well, but I'll at least do this one little component. So just closing our eyes. And first of all, let's just go back to the, um, the sphere of golden shimmering light that's around us. Beautiful shimmering light. I want you to be aware of your physical body and where it sits and just scan the periphery of your body. So like you can just run your awareness over the surface of your body. And now what I want you to do is just move your thoughts forward of your body into the space just before your body. So with your eyes closed, you might perceive some light or some vibration, or some of you may even sense a bit of color in the sphere just in front of your head and in front of your chest and around your hands or even just above your hands. And just consider yourself or place yourself in this sphere of energy outside your body partially. And now imagine looking back at where you're sitting. Now, somewhere above you, dimensionally, not so much physically, but dimensionally, is another part of you, which is living or dwelling in the spiritual world. And for whatever reason, energetically, it is not fully incarnated into your body. So there's part of you that's above you dimensionally, and there's part of you that is there physically. Now, just at the top of your abdomen, just below your sternum, is a portal. And this is the portal of your solar plexus chakra, which coincidentally, the same or similar color as to the card is beautiful, bright, vibrant, yellow, goldy yellow, I want you to imagine that this chakra is being empowered from above and that there is a stronger stream now coming from a portal above you dimensionally down into your sphere of light and you are holding it just in that area near your stern, near your, below your sternum at the top of your abdomen. And you are directing it there from your position where you're just outside your body. And you're holding, you can symbolically imagine that you're holding your hands like a, like a bowl shape, holding the light, holding the energy there. If you want to physically move your hands so they're cupped and holding this beautiful, shining, gleaming, golden yellow ball of chakra before you, it is becoming strengthened. And now as you're looking at it from outside of yourself, above your head, 
the portal is being widened for you to become more present within your physicality. And now we're going to step back through this chakra back into your body. So imagine now that you are going to stream yourself from outside your body back through this golden chakra into your body, streaming into your body through this chakra. And as you stream back in, you can have the imagination that there's more of you coming in now than what went out because of the strengthening of this link and this vortex. And as we are now coming into our body, we can imagine again the chakra before us. And now behind it, on the physically away from us, we are just sealing it up temporarily so this greater part of us can assimilate within us. I want you to sit for a moment and allow this higher part of you, like light that wasn't within you before, to find its way through your body. It will come through your astral body into your chi or your life body and then move through your physical body progressively. Just be aware of any subtle changes within you as this occurs. And without regulating your breath, just be aware of it. Is your breathing in a different pattern to normal? As you're breathing in, is it like you are breathing something energetically in that's outside your body? So I'm being, my attention is now drawn to my third eye. And as you're breathing in, imagine what's happening around your third eye. So there is part of you, a higher part of you that has entered in to your being. And this higher part of you from working internally has activated another part, particle or section of your third eye. So there is more of you to receive impressions now through your third eye, because there is a higher aspect of you more present within you to receive it. And so it is with each of your soul or spiritual senses, particularly your crown chakra and your third eye, that through such practices, you are able to more fully incarnate your higher aspect, which is what is required for your spiritual soul senses to work optimally. And progressively, your energy bodies, your astral body, would become more accustomed and capable or have the capacity to absorb more of your higher self and in turn, more of your higher senses of perception will be activated for you to receive from above. And 
And just for another moment or two, a couple of minutes, just be aware of any subtle changes, either physically or energetically around you as this continues to take effect. And now just being asked now to place our hands over our solar plexus. And just imagine that like a veil of protection or um, it's just like an insulating veil is just being placed over that receiving area of our solar plexus. And now just one or two deep breaths, drawing the air right down, down deep into your diaphragm. And full expulsion of the breath. So work very hard to do a complete expulsion of the breath. Okay, so we can just, um, just wake ourselves back up and have a, another sip of water or two and just let that be. And um, any feedback, I might, sometimes I sort of wonder, am I just making and experiencing this myself or did anyone else sort of have an experience and re receiving? Um, um, Fran, anything happening at your end? Um, yeah, actually, um, I had a bit of nausea um, early on in that last meditation when you draw our attention to the solar plexus and, and I just felt a bit of nausea in that area. And normally I would feel nausea if I was going to feel it lower down. Um, and I just kind of breathe through it and, you know, listen to the rest of your meditation and it's gone away. Um yeah, so I wasn't not quite sure what that was about, but yeah. I mean, I know from kinesiology, which is what I do, that um, the solar plexus is about will or power. Um, yeah, but um, I'm not really sure why uh, why that, that happened. Well, look, I can certainly feel something in my solar plexus right now. It's not... I wouldn't say it's nausea, but it's a, a definite distinct feeling of, of um, something that I can't quite describe, but it, it's certainly there. Um, anyone else have um, any experience or feeling or sensed anything there? Um, Meredith, did you, did you pick up anything at all? Did you have any feelings during that? Um, just with the breathing, I noticed um, that I was kind of changing energy and just breathing differently a bit occasionally. Mm -hmm. So I did recently did a course where we practice doing trance type stuff and I noticed my breathing would do that. So every few breaths I would take a big breath and then just sort of sink down a bit more. But mm -hmm. It was more that just that I would, it's almost like a yawn type thing. <laughs> hmm. yeah. Have you still got that card there, Karen? Well, you're muted, so we can't hear you. Um, do you mean the hope card? Oh, the, yeah, the one that, the last one that we saw, that's the one that triggered. The whole, yeah, that one. Yeah. So that's it's interesting that that little ball of light has been held in the same place, and it is the the, the color of that chakra, and it's the one where we can assert our presence and um, 
just be more present for these sorts of encounters with people. Yeah, so yeah. very, very interesting card for the occasion. Um, right. Can I just share what I experienced as well was yeah. um, I was getting sharp pains in the solar plexus whilst we were doing that integration. And whilst I do kinesiology as well and I get that it's about power and will, it's also about identity. And I've realised that my identity and my authentic identity has sort of, it's really starting to blossom now and I'm getting who I really am. And I think I just needed that exercise tonight to be able to go, okay, now let's bed this down. You can now step forward with who you really are rather than just who you used to pretend to have to be for everyone else rather than from, like Pamela said, from a place of self-love and doing what I authentically want to do. So that was a really beautiful experience. So thank you for that. Okay. You're welcome. Well, you pulled the card and that triggered the, the <laughs> guides. So I'm not sure what came first, the guides or the cards. I think they may have pulled the card for us. I think so. <laughs> yeah. um, Jeff, did you want to share? Um, yeah, look, this is a bit left of centre, I guess, but I've been working with magenta and blue and struggling with it in some of my artworks. And tonight I had just this flow of magenta and blue coming in and like a granulated energy pouring in as I breathed in. Mm. And I didn't even have to think about it. It just flowed. It was just a really nice feeling. At, so at, what, at what point did the magenta flow, Jeff? Um, there, when you said breathe in and capture the ball with your clasped hands at your mm -hmm. solar plexus. I already had my hands clasp, which is not something I do naturally. Mm -hmm. And I caught the ball and I brought it up to my solar plexus and then flowed the magenta and blue. Yeah. A bit well, simplistic, but it was good. <laughs> yeah, well, the interesting thing is here, and this we had a bit of this last week, Jeff, is that you were already doing what I was about to describe. And it's yeah. like you already knew intuitively to do that. So, um, and I felt it too. I just felt my hands going into that position. I've been taken there. So I thought, okay, this is what everyone has to do. But you, you'd already picked up on the same vibe. So, yeah. That's, that's a natural reaction, but I, I still feel I need a, a guide to take me to the ultimate solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Miss, Miss Nadu, have you got any other <laughs> thoughts you'd like to share? Yes, um, so it's so synchronistic because this morning I actually did a meditation on personal power. So when you actually did the whole thing, I did that this morning. So, um, and what came about was, um, is that we need to do this on a daily basis, all of us, um, because, you know, with interactions with other people, we tend to, um, you know, we, we form energetic cords. And in forming energetic cords, like Karen said, you lose a bit of yourself um, because, um, well, it comes down to personal boundaries as well, doesn't it? It comes down to boundaries and, um, um, and it is, your, like you said, Karen, about self-identity. And that's what came in this morning for me about identity because identity of yourself and how you drive yourself forward in the world, how you perceive the world and how the world perceives you very much from that energy center so um topping up that energy center on a daily basis even um before you go to bed or first thing in the morning you know um is going to be so powerful because um what it does is in the morning what i do is i wake up and immediately sit up in bed and i do a meditation you know as soon as i wake up and open my eyes because what it is is it's grounding you in your own energy and in your own energy, that is your signature feeling of who you are. Whereas when you go out in the world in the day, you lose some of yourself because, you know, you can meet with somebody and they can have, um, I don't know, be in a bad mood. And then you, you know, you can absorb some of that energy. Um, I know I absorb energy, so I have to clear out quite regularly. 
And I mean, I'm better at not absorbing energy now, but it's, it's like a sponge. And so if you remember who you are and your own source of energy feeling first thing in the morning and you top it up, then you will always be in your power. You will always be authentic. And um, you would just operate from a higher level. You'll bring in more compassion and more, um, you know, from the, you bring in more compassion in yourself because what you're doing is you're giving to yourself on a, on a self-love mm -hmm. level. So you will automatically bring in some of those qualities into your relationships and they will, you know, it will eliminate power struggles when you're dealing with other people as well. So it was interesting when you did that, um, Roger, because also um, um, the meditation itself, it felt like to me, it was just another top up because of what I've done this morning. But also an interesting thing that came to me was if you imagine your solar plexus and you have a dial sitting right there, whenever you're in interactions with other people and you feel like you're losing power, crank up that dial mm. and brighten it up and let the yellow flood you. And then you feel like you sort of, I mean, it's not a power struggle. What I mean is you stand more authentically in yourself. So you crank up your personal power and you're able to not be afraid to speak up, not be afraid to express more in that situation, whatever the situation may be. Um, and then when you feel, you can, you can have a gauge in your mind's eye of what the dial is looking like. And that's really helpful for me because then it knows where I'm sort of, okay, what's happening in this scenario? What's my personal power like? And if I feel like I'm shrinking, then I can crank up the dial a little bit. So that I found to be helpful. And also, um, um, uh, I was gonna say, it's like you can also form a bridge between your um, solar plexus to your heart and merge the pink and the, the, um, the yellow. And merging the pink and the yellow and cranking up that dial just brings more love into all of your relationships because then you truly operating from the heart center and not just an ego center. Hmm. Well, you've got lucky children, Pamela. Do I? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now I've just got an eye on, on the clock there too. So we need to wrap up very, very soon. Um, any other comments, any other questions before we start to bring this to a closure? Uh, okay. Now my camera went off over here. I'll just try and get it back on again because we've got... Um... Yeah, question to Pamela. How do you find who you really are? Because that's what everyone's saying, but no one gives you, like, um, to find anything specific, definition and whatsoever. Um, yeah, everyone's saying this, but no one's having specific definition and methodology. Uh, well, it's feeling, for me, it's very much feeling in who I am and trusting the person I am, uh, just, you know, in every situation, just being pr more present with who I am. Um, and if you feel like you're sort of being pulled in different directions, you really have to, like Jeff said, uh, like Roger said, is bring that breath in and focus in on the breath. And when you focus in on the breath and you connect with yourself more, when your energy, I think sometimes for me, my energy tends to go. And so if you just center yourself, even if you're talking with somebody um, and you feel yourself sort of leaning forward or leaning back or whatever, just, um, I find I have to be more aware of just, okay, sit straight, draw in my power, breathe, focus, be present in that moment align yourself and then you just naturally are connected with who you are. Okay, just a sec. All right, thanks. All right, just onto the room cam here. So, um, Rika, you'll have to use a big voice because the microphone's way over here because I wasn't expecting people to be talking over there tonight. <laughs> but... No, sorry, I just wanted to say, um, Pamela, what you just said, that was my meditation about tonight. It was just spot on what you said. And I was like, oh my God, I, I wish I could talk to you right now. Like, this, 
amazing. <laughs> Oh, that's really lovely to hear. I think it's so synchronistic because Roger's actually tying it all together for us. I know, I came here and I was saying stuff and then in dream meditation I was realizing it wasn't even me, it was other people's stuff, you know, fear or sadness or everything. And after meditation I feel more myself and more, you know, truth to myself and ready to go out. So I was thinking I should do that every morning <laughs> before I do anything else. So it's not other people it's coming out from me, it's me. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. All right. You. Good one. Now, we will um, we'll start to close off. Now, for people who aren't in the UK, because poor, poor old people in the UK only get to come on here once a week. People in Sydney and Singapore and get to come on here twice a week. So I have, um, and we get some pretty big groups. We have a Saturday session here in Australia. We can get up to 50 people in a session with people from Canada and the US. It gets a little bit impersonal. So I'm bringing in what I'm calling an inner circle for people here in Australia and the US. And um, the only way you can get into the inner circle is to actually become a, a subscriber to it. So a few of you are already subscribers, but the easiest way is to just use this link that I've, I've got it up in all of our meetup events, but to click in there and put in your um, first name and email address. Amazing people who don't put their email address or their name on it. And I can then just send you the link straight back for the inner circle events. So every people in Australia, this is just people in Australia, US, every second week will be an inner circle event. And it starts, um, the, the people in America start this on Saturday. Um, we've got a special guest coming in on Saturday, Julie Corbell, who's the author of a series of books that I'm um, co-writing co with her and a couple of other contributors and running a whole series of workshops that we're looking at on this weekend, what, what's holding us back and looking at things in our present life. And then next month, we're gonna be looking at um, past life trauma that's holding us back. And Julie runs a soul healing practice amongst, that she's also an author and does a number of other things as well. So that's, that's something coming up um, uh, Saturday here for people in down under on Friday night in the US. Okay, and eventually I'm going to try and get a Tuesday evening session happening in the UK, which means I have to get up at like five or six in the morning to do it, but we're going to get there, okay, because I think it's a good, good thing to do. All right, and I might even have people in the UK. Um, I know this lady over in the UK, Miss Madhu, who would be very good to come on to one of those sessions and contribute. I will definitely be there. Sign me up. <laughs> okay. And um, Ronald in Singapore. Um, 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 yeah, poor people in Singapore get um, a, a raw deal because they don't get very good time slots because... Um, people over there, it was 5 p.m. when we started. People are just coming home from work. We get people tuning in on buses and public transport from time to time. So not ideal for them. But um, 10, I think it's 10 a.m. Saturday morning, Ronald. But you can just use the link through, the, through your meetup to join us, okay? So you get a good deal. Okay. And thanks for joining us too, Ronald. I didn't really get a chance to say hi before, but good, good to have you there. So um, everyone just close your eyes for a moment. And um, just as we're about to close down, um, we already partially closed down, but we're just gonna put your hand back over your solar plexus area because we also are opened up to receiving a lot of the lower emotional frequencies from everyone else in the big wide world out there. So again, taking a big long breath and we're gonna hold the breath. Just imagine particularly our sacral chakra slowing down so we're not going to absorb all those lower angry emotions that are out there. And then just as we're exhaling, we're letting go and releasing any 
psychic or emotional connections that no longer serve our higher good. And oh, one very important thing to do here, we're going to send a message of gratitude to our spiritual helpers who have been very busy orchestrating this tonight. So a um, few people said that I pull, pull it together, but it's by virtue of um, the spirit people upstairs that do that. Okay, so even the cards, some of the cards that got pulled were orchestrated by spirits. So our thanks to them, for the messages, for the, the picture of the chakra meditation in particular that was brought through. I appreciate that. And draw the work energetically that goes on behind the scenes and actually unite us um, in the dimensions above us that make, make this all possible. And just that final thing, just um, put a little bubble of protection around you to seal in all the goodness from this session. And um, that brings us to a closure, but hopefully see you all back here um, next week. Um, so next, this time next week, Thursday next week, we'll use the same link as we did today and then everything changes. So you just have to keep an eye on the meetup listings for the changes with the length. So we're getting a few trolls dropping in on a few of our sessions, but now it's going to be a lot much tighter. So we're not going to get those interruptions as much. We might get the odd one, but it's going to be much, much tighter group. So um, there we go. Um, so Pamela, so do I just send my W? All right, mate. Well, Pamela, you people in the UK um, don't have to worry about it yet. <laughs> when, when, okay. once, I, once I get a good Tuesday night group happening over there, then we'll we'll switch over to a to a subscriber base. But um, okay. you guys are still getting to know me. You know, people are here in, in, in Sydney, Australia, and Melbourne. Um, we've, we've been getting a good deal for about a uh, couple of years now. So <laughs> But it takes me, like it took me a full two days, solid days last week, getting all the events up, negotiating and getting some speakers and guests lined up and getting some of, um, some of the links sorted out as well. So a lot of work goes in. I have, just so you know, I had 15 different meetup groups around the world, um, plus my website, plus a Facebook account and subscriptions to a few other things to make it all happen. So... It keeps me busy. It's a part-time job, actually, now to, to make it all work. But it's it's good. Um, it's, it's got a good vibe. And really nice to meet people, meet you guys. And many of you wouldn't actually meet if it was, wasn't for this platform and this technology. So, you know, COVID's brought us a gift in a way. It's brought a lot more united spirituality to the world. So... Enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Have a great week, everyone. Uh, Roger, just quickly, Ronald's asks, is there a Facebook group um, here in the chat? Um, um, yeah, just give me a sec. Um, I can do a cut and paste here somewhere. Copy and paste. Um, yeah, here we go. To everyone. <coughs> okay, so just copy and paste that out of the chat now before we close down. And just pop it straight into your browser if you like. And you can just join it um, as a member. And I put a few different kinds of posts up there. I, um, I get a bit busy to post every single event on that page. Um, but one day, you know, I might have a secretary to help me do all this stuff. I can't keep up with it. Or sometimes, you know, so I wish there was more than one of me, but there's not. You know. so, um, okay, so have a great week and um, I look forward to catching you up. Bring a friend, spread the word, um, bring a deck of cards next time if you haven't already got one. and. Um, Get involved. So yeah. have a good week. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye
Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.